Hi, uh, I'm going to talk about something else than, than you have seen on the schedule. Uh, because it was uh, it was written CNN based uh, grass geese or something like this. So I'm going to talk just about uh, one implementation of convolutional neural networks in in grass. Uh, firstly, I will say something about uh, why do I believe that uh, it's it's the right time to implement some uh, some artificial neural networks into GIS. Uh, then I will briefly and briefly say something about the, the architecture itself, and then then I will show how to use and the, and the implemented modules and some uh, some of the results. Uh, so the situation nowadays is that uh, there is higher density of the satel uh, satellite monitoring systems and of aerial imagery, and also the, and there is. Uh, and, there, and there is a bit of uh, vectorization of analog maps, which means that we have more and more data. Uh, also, uh, what, is, what is nice that the, the data, uh, of course, are, are of higher quality because yeah, the, until, unless you, you are like a laddit or something, you, you just want to move forward in the, in the technology and not backward. Uh, another uh, another nice uh, nice thing about the situation nowadays is that there is a, a lot of open data. Uh, maybe still not enough, but uh, but then there is this trend to uh, to open the data, so it's easier to access them. And uh, the same uh, the same applies for for the data standardization, because uh, uh, it's it's. It really sucks when you have to uh, parse every image separately just because everyone uses his own format and naming convention and triangle pixels and stuff like this. Okay, but, uh, but uh, mask RCNN uh, makes, uh, makes uh, classification. So are there some, uh, some ways uh, some other ways to do it, of course, and um, there are. Uh, you you can do some uh, some manual classification uh, in GrassGIS. It means that you will use the Grass uh, digitizing tool and just click uh, click like a monkey. Uh, then then you can use some uh, some kind of sup uh, supervised classification. Uh, it is also supported in in GrassGIS. And even the, the unsupervised classification is uh, is supported in GrassGIS. So the the question is, why do we need neural networks to uh, to uh, the artificial neural networks to do this when when we already have some tools? So uh, the and the thing is that uh, the human brain is uh, the most powerful tool we uh, we know or or we have. Or that's uh, that's at least what is uh, generally believed, uh, which could be also some kind of a neurochirurgical uh, propaganda, not to lo lose their and their job. But it's it's up to you. Uh, and also, also, why should we try to alter the uh, the human uh, human conscious? And the human uh, human uh, perception is because we uh, we want some uh, some human uh, understandable or readable results, uh, uh, which which I will try to uh, to show on the on the next uh, next figures, uh, like here. Okay, the the computer and just outputs an apple and uh, and a pear, and I think that most of the of the reasonable classifiers will recognize an apple. And then and the pair, but it it can be like this because like okay it's it's an apple and it's a, it's it's a pair, which which seems quite easy, but when you look at this like then and, and there is a, there is a huge cosmology of, of different kinds of uh, apples, and uh, f for us as as human beings, uh, it is. Uh, it is pretty obvious that uh, that everything on on these pictures are apples, but uh, from uh, from or maybe not uh, not with the first ones, but we we can see an apple in in that. Uh, but uh, for the computer, 
or from the computer vision point of view, they are completely different. And even even more destructive uh, example is this uh, this uh, this statue of cat, uh, because well, when some uh, when a human being looks at the, these pictures, uh, the, he or she uh, she can see that it's the same statue, uh, but. Again, from uh, from the computer vision, when you just parse pixels, and you are not uh, not a thinking uh, think, thinking being, uh, then it it can look like something uh, completely different. Uh, from from the artificial neural networks, I have used uh, their subset called convolutional neural networks. I guess that most of you uh, know what is convolution. So, uh, so I'm going to reveal another lie, just like the one with brains. Uh, in convolutional neural networks, uh, mostly in the, and there is used cross-correlation and not convolution. But it's, it's uh, one C extra, so, uh, so CNN is faster than CCNN. And uh, the result is the same if, if you use convolution or cross-correlation in there. So, so it really doesn't matter. It's just faster to to uh, to compute the cross correlation. And why convolutional neural networks? Uh, I will I will try to explain it with uh, with an example. Uh, in the year 2016, uh, in in one of the image recognition challenges, an architecture called ResNet, using the convolutional neural networks, was proposed. And it, it uh, reached in the, in the top five error of 3.6%, which is like almost 4%. So, so every 25th, 25th image was, uh, was classified wrongly, which can seem like not, uh, not, uh, not, uh, not the best thing we have ever seen. But humans reached 8% error. So, so it was the, the, the year when, when uh, Philip K. Dick and all the, and the apo apocalyptic sci-fi books about uh, computers smarter than, than, than people got real. Um, there are different kinds of, of classification. Uh, there is a semantic segmentation, which is a pixel-wise classification of, uh, of uh, every pixel in, in, in the image, and that's not the one uh, Mask RCNN uses. Uh, and there is also a simple, uh, simple classification, which just, uh, just returns uh, the, the class of, of the object in the image. Uh, if, if you are a tough guy, then, then you, uh, you connect it with the uh, localization, so, so you have even the bounding box telling you where, where the object is. And when you have more, uh, more, uh, more instances of, of one class in, in, the object, uh, in the picture, it's called the object detection. Uh, but mask RCN uh, uses instance segmentation, which is like the combination of the first one and the, uh, and the third one. Uh, so you are segmenting every instance of the object separately. So, so instead of, of uh, this big puddle of, of uh, yellow pixels, you are able to, uh, to recognize, f uh, for example, every building separately. You just don't, don't have this, uh, this huge, huge puke of bil and building pixels. And this is just uh, another example of instant segmentation. Uh, mask RCNN uh, is divided into uh, two parts two parts and uh, the architecture, the so-called uh, backbone, uh, backbone architecture and the, and the head architecture. Uh, for the backbone architecture, you can use different models, uh, but in the, in the implementation into GrassGIS, I have used ResNet. Uh, and uh, uh, the user has, uh, has the possibility to choose two ResNets. ResNet 50 and ResNet 101. Uh, after, after ResNet, uh, you get something called feature maps. And uh, on, on top of this, uh, there is 
uh, RPN, which stays for reg Region Proposal Network. And uh, as, uh, as the title of Whispers, it, it proposes regions where, where the object uh, could be or in the instant, instant, instance of, uh, of an object. And it, it works like this. Uh, you have just a sliding window uh, of, of different, uh, different shapes and sizes. And it slides through, uh, through, uh, through the feature map and um, generates possible, uh, possible um, uh, instance uh, localizations, which are then, then, uh, then, then parsed in, uh, uh, deeper in the, in the network to decide whether the, the object is really there. Because it's, it's computationally very, very demanding, so you don't want to, uh, to parse everything all the time. So, so there is like, like a filter of, of these uh, anchor boxes. Uh, now to the head architecture. Uh, there are three parallel branches. Uh, the first one is just a simple softmax layer, uh, which is uh, returning a class of, um, of the instance of the object, which means that uh, here you, uh, you, you would get something like cowboy or, uh, or most probably cowboy if, if it's not not wrong uh, the the second uh, second parallel branch is uh, is just a regressor uh, which which returns the bounding box telling you where the object is in the, in the picture and then parallel to uh, to these uh, these two uh, two branches is the mask branch which then uh, then uh, segments and the uh, the and the uh, already localized object, and returns this uh, pixel-wise mask, telling you where exactly the the object appears. Talking about pixels and uh, not the in the bounding box. Uh, two uh, two modules were created for for GrassGIS uh, and and one library, but um, but it's hidden. Uh, no, the, the train module and the detect module, because, because yeah, the, the detection is the, the interesting part, but uh, unfortunately you, you have to, uh, to train the model to, uh, to do something, which is the, the bo boring part. But pretty, pretty good for your salary, because it means that you will just start the training and then, then you can go home and wait, wait like five days getting, getting the salary and then, then check the results and find out that they are completely wrong. Start again the five day computation and get, and get more money for nothing and, and then get fired. Um, so in the, in the for, firstly, you should use the, the train, dot train module uh, where, where you have a plenty of, of uh, different, is it readable what is written there? No. Yes, no, okay, no one knows. Uh, then you have a plenty of parameters you can specify to, to, to uh, make your architecture more suitable to the task you are going to do. So, so I'm just going to, to underline a, a few of the, of the mandatory ones. Uh, of course, you, you have to define the classes you, you want to, uh, you want to uh, detect in there. Uh, then, then if you want, you, you can load uh, pre-trained weights, which which can pretty pretty uh, help your 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 training to to be faster. Uh, like it's it's like if if the, uh, there is a kid and uh, wants to to uh, recognize balls, it's it's good when you know how to recognize circle or sphere. So. so it's, it's like this, uh, pre-trained weights are, are something like a model trained or, or a different task, but it's, it's, it's easier than, than to, to detect uh, the, the, the stuff you want. But you don't have to do it. You can, you can train your model from scratch, but it will take a longer time. Uh, yeah, of course you have to define the, the path to the training data set because it's supervised. Uh, classification 
and then you, then you just start training, you, you define number of epochs of training. After each epoch, the, the, the model is saved to, uh, to your disk, which is the, the next step. It's, it's really good to, uh, to define the path where you save the models. Uh, then, then you can uh, start on the detection, which means that uh, that you have to load the model again, uh, and uh, and uh, pass there some uh, some rasters. These uh, rasters uh, could be uh, could be maps already imported in GrassGIS, uh, or they can be uh, external uh, external georeferenced uh, raster files. Yeah, and uh, and. Uh, and the user can can specify whether he wants to represent the uh, the uh, detect, uh, detected uh, instances as points or or areas, which are polygons, because sometimes, f uh, for example, with uh, with sig trees, it's it's enough to uh, to detect them as as points, not to have the the polygon in the in the shape of the tree. It's an overkill. Yeah, uh, now I have some uh, some uh, some brief uh, brief examples of the results. Uh, here here it's uh, it's a model trained to uh, to uh, to detect uh, soccer or football pitches. It depends if you are from uh, from US or, or from Europe, and it works uh, quite well. The, and these are polygons in the inside the lines. Here is the same for the for the tennis pitches. And uh, it's it's pretty nice because w when I used in different classifiers, they had pretty big problem with the with the tennis pitch covered uh, covered with the shadow. Uh, if if they recognized it, uh, they recognized only the the part which which is not covered by by shadow. So so I was pretty happy about uh, this uh, this result. Yeah, here here it's the same. Just to show you that. Uh, you can do it also for multiple classes. It's it's up to the user how many classes he wants to detect. Uh, yeah, and why why is it uh, saving the the model after each epoch? I want to show it on on this example uh, because uh, you never know, or most probably uh, you don't know which epoch will be the the best one. So. You run it for 200 epochs, and when you see that and that it's really good, you, you can kill it after the 100 epochs, and you still have the, the intermediate re results. And it's because of this. Like after after the first epoch, this is the uh, building detection. Uh, it's it's completely wrong. After the the 10 uh, tenth epoch, uh, I'm not sure if if it's uh, worse or better. Uh, but then, then after some more epochs, you can see that the result is is quite good. After some, some more epochs, it's it's even better. Uh, no, what was surprising for me, I mean, what was not surprising is that uh, the the tennis page is detected as a um, as a building. But I believe that this was uh, due to the fact that I trained it on a, on a lot of uh, orange roof uh, buildings. Which was maybe a mistake or, or not uh, not sufficient uh, data set, as we have heard a few times today. Uh, but the nice thing is, for example, the building uh, down there, where, where, where there is just a small piece of the building, and it's it's still d detected as a building. Uh, but it still uh, still doesn't explain why it's it's. Uh, the 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 model is saved after each epoch. After 30 more epochs, it got much and much worse. Uh, the the small piece of building is not detected. The the uh, the building on the on the left is is also not detected. Uh, a piece of uh, of uh, road is uh, suggested as um, as a building. So. That's and that's the and the and the very peculiar or, or, or dangerous thing about uh, the the neural networks, and that uh, it's pretty easy to uh, to overfit such a huge model, and therefore it's it's good to uh, to save the intermediate results, 
and um, don't wait for, for the last epoch because the more train it doesn't and it doesn't mean that it will get uh, get better and better for uh, forever yeah here is just uh, just uh, some uh, some info uh, you can uh, you can find it in the official uh, grasgis addons repository so uh, so you can uh, you can install it in in grass with the gng extension uh, command and there are some next steps uh, i would like to do like support more more convolutional uh, neural network architectures in grass hopefully as soon as possible and yeah no, from from these pages i have uh, i have still done the pictures and thank you for your attention So there's no questions, are you sure? There were many questions before. Oh well, there's one. Thank you for breaking the ice. I want to ask if you know about any pre-trained models in this space for uh, satellite images? Uh, I know about pre-trained uh, models, but not for satellite images. Uh, but uh, when, when I was testing it and to, to get these results, uh, I've, uh, I've made a test uh, where, where I was uh, using the, the pre-trained model uh, trained on ImageNet, so, so on, on common objects like cars and, and, uh, and uh, people and stuff like this on the streets. And even with, uh, with pre-trained models uh, like this, it is faster. So it is better to, uh, to use a pre-trained model which is trained on, uh, on something else uh, than, than starting from the scratch. Because as I said, like, like when you are learning how, how um, for example, cars look like, uh, you learn the, the basic shapes. You, 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 uh, you teach yourself to, uh, to recognize circles, rectangulars, and stuff like this. So at least th and there is something in the, in the, in the, in the weights. Uh, just another one. Uh, do you know if there's any initiative to like create some data set for like a pre-trained model in satellite images, like some organization that already does that? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Confidential. Uh, the, the, uh, but uh, but uh, I'm working on this, but uh, it's it's a uh, hard uh, hard uh, work to and to. Uh, uh, well, firstly, it's it's not done yet, and secondly, uh, it's a hard uh, hard work to uh, to uh, to tell the JRC in in Italy to uh, to open it, like really, because they and they have sometimes quite weird opinion about what is open data. Thank you. In your network architecture model, the RCNN you are using only 2D convolutional layer, am I right? Only? 2D convolutional layer. Uh, no. Yeah, maybe it... Ah, yeah, yeah, uh, 2D. Yeah, 2D convolutional so, uh, sorry, layer. Sorry, sorry. Uh, yes. So no 3D yet. So uh, do you, are you considering that in the future model that you want to integrate? Yeah. The I would like uh, to, to, to make, uh, make also something for, for 3D, but yeah, the, I, I've tried just, uh, to be honest, I've tried just uh, once in my life to, uh, to train uh, 3D convolutional uh, networks, and it worked, but it was for, for some very simple task, uh, tasks, so, so yeah, I would like to do it, but for for sure, uh, I, I need some time, and I need to study the the architectures which are proposed now, the the bleeding edge, and and stuff like this. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's not for your question, but maybe you know. 
Uh, have you tried to train uh, the, uh, on one resolution data set uh, and uh, uh, try to take results from other resolution? For example, train on one meter uh, data set and uh, uh, like test uh, on 10 meter. What result will? Yeah, uh, this one uh, was done, uh, the, the training was done on one resolution, which was like 30 centimeters. Uh, it was like the training data set was based on the Bing imagery. And the detection was done, done uh, on something like 60 centimeters. So, uh, so it's like two times worse, but I've never tried or, or I've tried once to uh, to train something on on uh, on a two meter data set and then then apply it on on Sentinel with with ten meters, but uh, it didn't work for me. And, uh, I, I, yeah, and, uh, I think that it it really depends on the task. If you want to uh, to uh, to detect for for example crops, it should work theoretically. But, but, for, but for, for, for cars and, and very like de and detailed things, uh, it's, it's really, uh, really hard to, uh, to detect it with. And we should uh, train on the both resolution. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if you have data from, uh, from both resolution and, and you, have the, you have them labeled as a training data set, just try to feed them and the model with, with uh, both resolutions. And then there is some resampling and stuff like this inside the architectures. Uh, so it, it, you can use different resolutions as input data, and then, then it should learn uh, both above the resolutions. Okay. Hopefully. Out of curiosity, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but as far as I know that standard mask RCNN, we define detection regions as uh, rectangles. It's just RCNN. Uh, yeah. It's uh, the, the, um, the generations are that and there was RCNN, mm -hmm. which was just this and this rectangle and detection. Fast RCNN, which was like a bit faster. Then they, and they got a new one, and they didn't know a, a cool name, so and so they called it faster RCNN, and then then they find that uh, it was still the rectangles, yeah. and then then and the same guy came with, with, I think that he was, I have the name even Gershik. somewhere here, yeah, and Ger and Gershik. yeah, yeah. so uh, so then then he came with with mask RCNN, and it's all already this uh, this pixel wise. Okay, I was go going to ask the same thing. Did you define something else to uh, enforce your outputs to create a polygon like or something like that? Uh, no, the, the, the result from, uh, from the architecture uh, is, is in pixels and then, then there is processing in, in grass uh, to, to, um, uh, to make the polygon. So it's a, a grass result, uh, the network yeah. output? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. And, uh, well, when talking about this, uh, I think that like half a year ago, I've seen a, a paper uh, which proposed mask RCNN plus. So, and so there should be something even better. Hopefully, not uh, not so hard to uh, to upgrade this version. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, then we stop here. Thank you very much. And.